So how does the intra-aortic balloon pump work? So it works by inflating a balloon and deflating that balloon, depending on what cardiac cycle we are in, what part of the cardiac cycle we are in. So when the aortic valve is closed, we are in diastole. So when the aortic valve is closed, the balloon pump is inflated. Inflation occurs during diastole and deflation occurs in systole when the aortic valve is opened. So with the timing of the intra-aortic balloon pump, it is set to inflate when the aortic valve closes, also at the dichroic notch. And it's set to deflate immediately as the aortic valve opens. Why this happens? Because imagine if this balloon was going to inflate when your aortic valve is open. Your heart is pushing blood through the aortic valve into your, your, your system, right? So if the balloon was inflated during this, the heart would be pumping blood against the balloon. This would increase pressure. This would litter. This would cause a really high pressure at the tip of the balloon pump and you could literally rupture your, your aorta. You could cause further heart failure. You can cause regurg back into left, left ventricle. You cause a whole lot of problems. So you can't, it's almost like if the balloon pump wasn't inflated, it's like a cork almost. If you, if you had a, if you had it corked off, how hard would your heart have to, have to squeeze to push that blood past that cork? So that's why it inflates when it's diastole and deflates when it's in systole because we want your heart to push against a smaller pressure gradient. And if you have it inflated during systole, your heart will be pushing against a really, really high pressure gradient, aka a cork in, in this sense. So when your heart is resting, it's in diastole. So the balloon pump is inflated. So what's going on there is there's counter pulsation going on, which then helps the blood to better perfuse the coronaries and the system. It's almost like an like an extra, you could say, pump, because your heart's a pump. So this is an intra balloon pump. When it inflates, it's giving the heart and the system an extra pump, extra pressure to push the blood where it's supposed to go. And that's what really assists the blood flow to the heart. This is what really perfuses your, your coronaries. This is what increases increases the myocardial oxygen supply, and at the same time, decreasing the myocardial oxygen demand. So if you imagine this, so this is sitting in your era, and this is inflated, and then this is deflated. So your heart is in the astole, your balloon pump is, is inflated. So your valve is closed. So what's happening here? So if you have a balloon in there, what is it causing? It's causing a, a higher pressure. And if you're causing a higher pressure, it displaces the blood and it pushes it further where it has to go. So when it's inflated, this is when you're using the counter, counter pulsation to push the blood into the coronary arteries and also push the blood further into the body. And then with systole, the balloon pump is closed. So think about it. When you go from inflated to deflating, it's almost like you're making a, a sucking motion because you're going from inflate to deflating and that deflation, it almost in a sense pulls all of your blood from the left ventricle through the aortic valve into the system, ultimately leading to better cardiac output. So the heart is working less because it's getting an assistance from, from this change in pressure in the aorta. So technically your heart has to not pump as hard, not squeeze as hard because this balloon pump is going from inflation to deflation and it's helping move that blood from the body from the heart to then the body so the goal the main goal of this inflation is to displace the blood into the coronaries so we want to augment the diastolic pressure so augment we want to make it greater so this balloon pump is making the diastolic pressure technically greater for a little bit in the aorta so that it could better push that blood and perfuse the coronary arteries and then leading to a decrease in myocardial oxygen demand while increasing the myocardial supply and perfusion. So again, what this is doing is it's increasing the aortic pressures, it's increasing your MAP with the goal of providing more oxygen to the myocardium and also increasing the coronary perfusion. 
And then during deflation, once again, what is happening and the goal is for it to decrease the pressure in the aorta so that the ventricle can have an easier time to push against this, this lower pressure. So that way, if this pressure is less than what the heart expected to be because it was an heart failure, you had his balloon pump deflates, lower the pressure, so now it's able to push blood harder and further with less strength because you're decreasing that pressure. Your heart doesn't have to push against that very stiff pressure gradient that it once had to push through before the intra aortic balloon pump was placed. So this decreases the pressures, which then helps the ventricles push the blood through. This temporarily increases the pressure in the aorta to help better perfuse the coronaries, while deflation helps to decrease that pressure to help the heart push through the systemic vascular resistance and better perfuse the whole body. So with that being said, if you're going to have one major takeaway or if you're going to be asked what does the intra aortic balloon pump do, just remember these three things. We we'll call it 3.5 things because number three technically is two things in one. But if anybody ever asks you, a physician comes up to you, maybe you're a, a new nurse, maybe you're starting in the cardiac ICU. If you remember these things, it's going to make this a little simpler. Or vice versa. You kind of have to know both. But if you at least understand what the intra aortic balloon pump does, you kind of figure out the, the rest of the of the equation and you could understand why we put balloon pumps in. So the main thing is that the intra aortic balloon pump does on a heart is increases cardiac output, increases myocardic oxygen demand, at the same time decreases afterload and decreases preload. So your heart is basically all pressures. If you could adjust one pressure, if you could lower one pressure, it's going to affect the heart in a, in a certain way. Like back to over here, when you increase the dose, the diastolic pressure, when you increase the pressure in the aorta, what happens? You get more provisions for coronaries. But we don't want that during systole. Because if you get that during systole, it means your heart has to work harder. So that's why we deflate the balloon because we want your heart to work, to work less. So when your heart is resting, we want to push blood. And when the heart is active, we want to pull blood in a way, if that makes, that makes a little bit more sense. So back to this. If you got to remember something, if you have one takeaway from this, I want you guys to remember these things. What does the intra aortic balloon pump do? Increases cardiac output, increases myocardial, myocardial oxygen supply, at the same time decreases afterload, decreases preload. It increases cardiac output because it helps the ventricles push past a lower pressure gradient with deflation of the balloon. It increases myocardial oxygen supply because we are inflating the balloon during diastole to help better perfuse the coronaries and it decreases afterload and preload. Afterload is associated with systemic vascular resistance and also the pressure that the heart has to push past to be able to push blood into your system which we help with deflation of the balloon. And preload we associate that with like your CVP we associate that with the pressure going into your right atrium and that is constantly, we don't directly affect it because we don't do anything in, in the in the right side sense. We only put this on the left side, but the fact that you are decreasing the afterload, decreasing the workload of the heart, you're then causing a decrease in preload because your heart doesn't have to work as hard. You're decreasing pressures at the end part of the cardiac cycle, therefore causing a decrease in pressure in the beginning site of the cardiac cycle, you could say.